Hey everybody, welcome back to Overkill Projects. A recent news item is that some governments are asking for volunteers, and specifically I'm thinking of New Jersey, but I think that there are other, uh, you know, like states that are asking for this. They're looking for volunteers to help them fix old COBOL code. That's right, COBOL, not COBOL, like the color blue. For the legacy systems, we should add a page for COBOLT. Uh, uh, computer skills. Because their systems are getting hammered by things like unemployment applications and things like that, and they're just not meant to run a, with a given volume. And so they're looking for COBOL programmers who are kind of hard to come by in order to help them out and get them out of the bind that they're in. And so I thought it'd be fun to do a video covering, uh, you know, what COBOL is, uh, why no one programs in it, and why the states are looking for volunteers to begin with. Now, before we get started today, uh, if you like what you see, make sure you give me the thumbs up so that I know you liked it. Uh, the subscribe button's down there, comment down below, and check the description for links to the things that I'm talking about. Just an upfront warning, I'm not a COBOL guru or anything like that, although I will say that I did work for some years uh, maintaining code written in a language that's not completely dissimilar and is similarly old and archaic, uh, so I do have some experience with what it's like to maintain very old systems. First, a quick history about what COBOL is because that sort of sets up the reason for the problem. So COBOL was a programming language, one of the first major programming languages, uh, and it was developed in the very early 60s as part of a group effort between businesses and the Department of Defense to come up with a single sort of unified language that could cover a bunch of different platforms, you know, a platform independent language uh, that people could use as systems were growing at the time. It actually has the very interesting distinction of being based on Flowmatic, which is a language that was largely developed by Grace Hopper, uh, who is like a major computer pioneer. If you haven't heard about her, you should look her up. I'll link some stuff down below in the description. And now since COBOL grew out of an initiative between businesses and government, those are the two groups that used COBOL to develop their systems. And now those are the systems that are still around today. The difficulty is that since COBOL grew up outside of academia, it has never really widely been taught, and especially not in the last 20 to 30 years. And what that means is that there are not a lot of new COBOL programmers, and that a lot of the old COBOL programmers are nearing retirement, or have already retired. And now, of course, all this makes sense. If you're a new programmer, you'd like to work on new problems and not maintain a bunch of 50-year-old code written by people, you know, in an obscure language that you've never really worked with. But that also means that when the stuff hits the fan, so to speak, and there's nobody around to fix it, we're all in a heap load of trouble, which is a situation we find ourselves in today. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why don't you just replace those old COBOL systems with new systems that run on modern languages? Wouldn't that be great? But, but this always runs into a massive problem, which is that it is very difficult to do. So the state that I currently live in, Pennsylvania, did this a long time ago. They are way over budget and it has taken them something like 15 years and they're still not done porting over their old COBOL to a new language, you know, a new framework. Now the state that I'm moving to, New Jersey, uh, is one of the states that needs volunteers to help them with COBOL uh, and they've never tried to update their backend. So, you know, they're just relying on on the people, the few resources that they have to maintain this framework forever. So now let's move over to the computer and I'll show you just how weird COBOL is. Now before you get started, you need a way to actually write and compile COBOL code. Uh, there are sort of native programs available. I'm mostly gonna be using an IDE uh, that was sort of developed online to work on an open source version of COBOL called New COBOL. But there are also online interfaces and a bunch of other things. So I'm gonna link some of that in the description down below. Make sure you check it out. So what you see here is just sort of like a loose introduction to a sort of program that I threw together to show you some of the functionality and weirdness of COBOL. Now, if you're used to a modern language, this should already look pretty freaking weird. At the top, we have some information. It's sort of like metadata, but it's necessary to get things going. At the very least, you need a program name, uh, and I simply chose as a name, hello, like hello world. So as we move down, you can see that COBOL has a certain uh, structural hierarchy. So there are divisions and inside of divisions, there are sections, and we're gonna take a look at that real quick. So at, towards the top, you're gonna see that there's this data division. And that's where all your variables are gonna go, or things that you think of as variables. It's also where any sort of like 
file uh, IO type stuff is gonna go. And you can see that in these next two sections, there's a file section and that's, you know, for operations with files. And then under that, you have this working storage section. And that's where we're gonna put all the stuff that we're just gonna use temporarily. That's like, you know, our, our working variables. And you can see here that I have a number of variables already defined. So the way you define them is you're gonna give this number out in front. That's sort of like a hierarchical thing. Uh, so if I had like a, like a different data structure, I might have different data levels. So level one is sort of this outer layer. Maybe I'd have like a level 10 inside, a level 20 inside of that, and so on. So I've prefixed each of my variables WS so that I know that they're from the working storage section. Uh, so I have like, you know, WS uh, dash A, and that's just gonna contain some value. That's why I have, you know, value here and then the value that it contains. You also see this little descriptor here that says pick and then some numbers. Pick tells us that this is a picture, which is just a way of talking about data types in COBOL. And it's telling me that I have nine integer positions for this variable. So this is an integer with a maximum number of nine digits in base 10. And you'll see down below how this sort of shakes out. And then similarly, as we go down, I've defined a few more variables in the same way. You see, sometimes I give them a value. Sometimes I don't give them a value because because I'm gonna give them one down below. So now moving down to the next division, this is the actual program division. This is where the stuff actually happens. So now you see inside of that, I have sort of like a, a main program that's going to run. And now in this thing, I have some basic examples of how to perform math with the uh, variables that I defined before. Uh, and you know, just print out the results so that you can see them. So the first line right away is already probably a little bit weird to you. Now in a typical modern programming language, you would see this written as ws-c equals you know, some number. But here, instead, we're telling COBOL to move a value to the variable. Now, while this might seem weird from most C-like languages, it actually might seem very familiar to people who've worked a lot with assembly language. In assembly, when you want to assign some value to a variable, what you do is you move that value to the memory space that is where that variable points to. And you're going to see that this is a pattern as we move down. In fact, the next line, which adds two numbers and then puts the result in a third variable, you see works a lot like the add keyword from assembly language. And obviously in a modern language, you would just write C equals A plus B. And you're gonna see down below that you can actually do things like that in COBOL, but this is sort of the more traditional way to do it. Now continuing on the same way, I have a multiply function that does the same thing. And then below that, you're gonna see that I actually am going to perform sort of like a subroutine task. So I actually have a little piece of code below our main program that's tagged uh, with 100 uh, multiply, uh, the value times the remainder here, which is left over from the division that we did just above. And so this is one of several ways that you can kind of jump around a program uh, and add a little bit of control to the main program like you would with, you know, functions and subroutines in other languages. And then after we display that result, I actually have a little factorial function down here that's just gonna do a, a loop through the numbers up to whatever C is and just multiply them all together, giving you the factorial function. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and run this program and you're gonna see the result pop up down below here and we get the results that we expect. You see that the display is a little bit weird um, but there's ways to clean that up and actually if you're interested in seeing a little bit more of an example of what COBOL can do, I've actually implemented the longest increasing subsequence algorithm in COBOL uh, and so you can kind of look through that and get an idea of sort of a little bit more advanced programming techniques, even though I, I leave tons of stuff out in this uh, example. So I'm gonna put that on GitHub and link it in down below in the description. Uh, feel free to peruse that at your leisure and learn a little bit more about COBOL, although I am no COBOL guru sitting on a mountain programming crazy stuff with the long beard and the wizard hat and all that sort of stuff. Okay, and I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. If you did, make sure you give me the old thumbs up down below so I know. Uh, subscribe, tell your friends, comment down below, check the description, and I will see you next time.